Good morning, fifth grade. This is my third and final attempt at getting my video to load today. So I'm gonna talk really fast and try to go really fast through this. Okay, so get your word nerd book out and we're gonna be looking at a word from yesterday and doing today's word. Yesterday's word was moccasins. It is a noun, a soft leather slipper or shoe, strictly one without a separate heel, originating among North American Indians. My sentence is the moccasins were beaded and beautiful. My synonym is shoe. My antonym is barefoot. That is from yesterday. Today's word is sacred. Notice that these are pictures carved into this rock. And the word is sacred. Okay. So that is that. Now we are going to go ahead and we will be looking at the Hindenburg. Today is our last day with our Hindenburg packet and we are on the last page of that. So we're gonna look at a little um, slideshow of that. Here we go. There is the Hindenburg. Here is what it looked like flying over um, New York and New, New Jersey. And look up here, this is a helicopter. Look how tiny that is compared to the giant Hindenburg. All right, here is another picture of it. Not the day it landed, but another flight that it was on. Here is where someone has made it in color because you have to realize most photographs, TV shows, uh, movies, everything was done in black and white at this time. Okay, here is the actual crash. There is what it looks like on fire as it's falling to the ground. Look how tiny the people look. And there it is in the sky, also setting fire as it's trying to land on the mooring right there. Okay. And then here it is once it hits the ground and it is burning. And there's the frame, all that is left. The hydrogen has been burned out. The outer skin has burned up and like popped like a balloon. And the only thing left is the inner core, which is made of steel and metal. So let's watch this video real quick. This is actual footage of when the Hindenburg crashed. And this will be in black and white. Hindenburg on her last flight sails over New York. These pictures made from a Pathé news plane less than four hours before the tragedy show the world's largest airship heading for Lakehurst, New Jersey. Over Newark's famous auto skyway, the airship was hailed by thousands who little dreamed it was their final glimpse of the Hindenburg. It's really big, isn't it? Inside the silver envelope are 16 separate gas bags, each filled with hydrogen, a highly inflammable gas. Yeah, so there's 16 compartments that have gas in them all running across the top. From the ground, you can see the forward control cabin from which the there. ship is operated. The windows along the side indicate the location of the passengers' right quarters, in which many were carried to a flaming death. Approaching Lakehurst, the Hindenburg appeared a conquering giant of the skies, but she proved a puny plaything in the mighty grip of fate. It almost seemed as if fate had set the stage for the horrible tragedy. A graceful craft sailing serenely to her doom. For three hours, the dirigible circled the landing field at Lakehurst, New Jersey, dumping more water ballast than ever before in vain efforts to level off. That's water coming out. They're trying to level it because the tail is dipping, and by releasing water, it makes it lighter. It's gonna do it a couple more times to try to level it out from the tail dipping down. Again, she dumps ballot, and a nervous tension grips those who are watching, for this is something unusual. Usually doesn't let out that much water, doesn't have to, because it's usually pretty level when it gets ready to land. And there's what it's trying to attach to right there. There goes more ballast, but the tail is settling in spite of all that has been dumped. A grim note of impending tragedy. So they're saying they did three times they tried to release water, which you're calling it ballast, and then they um, trying to level it out, make it even so it can land. Finally, the landing lines are dropped. See the landing lines. These scenes were filmed by Pathé News cameraman William Deak, and you are about to see the pictures he got when the ship exploded. Those aboard leaping for life from a flaming inferno. The actual crash of the Hindenburg, an airship destroyed in less than half a minute. Okay, here it comes. 
Look at that. How fast it burns up. And it's just gone. Eight times larger than a 747 Boeing jet. And then it's just gone. And you can see the people running out over here and over here from the plane. Well, it's not a plane, the blimp. Rushing to the rescue, the heroes of the tragedy dash in, heedless of danger to help the injured to safety, while others, beyond help, perish in the plane. You can see that all that's left is the metal structure. Okay, so that is a tragedy and a definite disaster that happened. But after it was over, some of the things that we learned from that was that obviously hydrogen was not a viable substance that we should have been using to um, make these blimps. They should have done something different. They thought maybe helium, which is what they uh, initially thought that they would use. It also proved that when that person in the first part of the story said that um, the ship was beyond, you know, having anything wrong with it. It was perfect. Well, they said that about the Titanic, too. And anytime you say something is perfect, there's always a margin for error because we aren't perfect. And that, that was kind of the tragedy behind that. But the good thing that came out of that was because of Hugo Eckener's desire to do transatlantic, which means go across the Atlantic Ocean, make that for everyone to be able to fly back and forth from Europe over to the Americas. Um, that was his dream, and that dream, after this happened, pushed the flight industry forward into what it is today. So they learned a lot of things from that, and they made better aircrafts and made it for people to, you know, a lot of people to be able to get on there and fly. They could go across the ocean. So they did a lot of work to make transatlantic um flight possible in a way where lots of people could do it. So that's what we learned from that. Now, let's move on to our native, oh, I gotta tell you what you gotta do, sorry. So on this paper right here, this is the last page in your packet. It says, we don't know for sure exactly why the Hindenburg um, caught, set on fire. Use evidence from the story and come up with a theory as to why it happened. Cite at least four pieces of evidence from your story. So you are going to, um, tell me why you think the Hindenburg caught fire. And there are several different theories about that. You can come up with your own. And it says four pieces of evidence. You can do three today. And what it means by evidence is you're going to be a reading detective today. You have to find places in your story or you can use information online and you have to tell me, um, like on page 678, it says... And that's why I think this. And you have to do that three times. You can also use websites. You can say, because the website, the Hindenburg Disaster Real Footage, I think that, and you have to do that. So you've got to have at least three pieces of evidence that prove whatever it is you think happened to the Hindenburg. And there are things in your story that could help you with that. All right? And then your Hindenburg packet should be all done, and you should put that in your, um, your purple pocket. Okay, so our next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our um, Navajo. And one of the things we haven't uh, looked at what we um, wrote down in our notes. So we're going to look at some real pictures of the Navajo Nation today so that you can see that. I have that also in another slide show presentation. So we'll look at the Navajo real quick. And let me show you this. Flip. Okay. So we have the dress here, we have the turquoise jewelry, here's a concho belt made of silver, here's kind of where they live, um, and that was in your notes that we did yesterday, right here, these, okay. So the Navajo are one of the largest Native American tribes, they wore deerskin clothing and wool dresses, they lived in one room windowless homes called Hogan's. So let's look at that, and here is our Hogan. Notice it is made of earth and it is made of logs. There are no windows. And then at the top, it has the thing for the smoke to go out. Okay, so that is what an actual Hogan looks like. Um, their main source of food was sheep, vegetables, and fry bread. And they, uh, oops, sorry, wrong thing. And, and they also are known for their beautiful and unique woven blankets that are made out of goat and um, goat hair and sheep sheep wool 
And this lady here has her loom and it's kind of like a picture frame and she is weaving and making her rug. You can see the design down there. And then here is an actual one that's finished. I love these colors, the red, the black, and the white, and the turquoise, it's beautiful. And every unique uh, rug is unique. No two are exactly the same. And then let's check out, here is the fry bread, yum, yum, yum. And over here, this is an actual Native American. That would be a Navajo taco like we have regular tacos because it is on fry bread. So there you go. And that looks really delicious. And that would be made out of wheat that they would grow. They have to irrigate, irrigate for their crops, which means they had to find a water source to bring the water to where their plants were because they live in the desert. And um, they bake this in a clay oven and it causes it to rise and poof up. Boom, boom. And then here are the sand paintings that they also do. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? So there's a sand painting. Um, and then here is someone actually making one and they just paint in the sand. And that was, that was something that they would do at their ceremonies. So those are some things about the Navajo. Now, um, I tried to read this book several times today, so since it's not working and it keeps making this video super long, I'm going to read it on Monday to you, even though it's about the Navajo and it's such a good story. I want to read it today, but it keeps going off. It's called The Goat in the Rug. It's super good. Um, it's about Glenn May and Geraldine the Goat, and they um, create a, a Navajo rug out of the mohair on her body where they shave it off the goat. Okay, so anyway, what we're going to do today, since I'm not going to be able to read that, I'm going to try that, like I said, Monday. We're going to make our own pattern on our own rug. This paper is in your purple, purple pocket. And here's mine. There you go. And if you were at school, we would glue this to some construction paper. We'd poke some holes on the end and we'd tie some yarn so it looked like a real rug. But we're at home, so I want you just to design your rug today. This is your Indian Navajo rug or blanket, whatever you'd like to call it. And you can get that colored and cut out and put that in your purple pocket, okay? And then let's look at our new words here. Let me flip my phone. Down here at the bottom of our Seminole Dictionary. So get your Seminole Dictionary out. I'm gonna go through the whole list one time. So we have Kazapi means cold. Chitto means snake. Lani means green. Aji means corn. Owa means water. Ifa means dog. Fatho means fish. Hasi means sun. Hathisi means moon. Miski means summer. Figi means heart. Faswa means bird. Penwa means turkey. Gudi means frog. Oba means owl. Ido means tree. Jada means blood. Jadi means red. Jussi means pumpkin. Jabaki means mad or angry. Sakba is an arm. Okay, now, ahuchka is a plant. Waga is a cow. Igana is a, the earth. And Espani is Hispanic. Okay, so now we're all done with that. That's your whole entire list of words. Okay, so we've got that. And then we have our Thinking Thankful Thoughts Journal. And we are on our very last day. So let's go ahead and go over yesterday's. Yesterday's said, um, let's see what yesterday's. So it's today is the last day without your item. Could you live forever without your item? And I gave up social media like scrolling things. So I'll tell you what mine says. Mine says, I could, I could live without my item forever. I know I could because I lived half of my life without that kind of technology. So I didn't grow up with that stuff. So I already lived part of my life without it. So I probably could live without it. I totally know that having any type of social media is a luxury. It is a want, not a need. Now, would it be hard to go back to a time without it? Yes. But could I survive? Absolutely. The world might even be a better place without it. So that's my thoughts about the question yesterday. Um, I do really think that I could live without it and my life would be okay. And maybe even the world would be better if we didn't have all this uh, stuff where we're always up in everybody's business and knowing everything um, and where people can fight and argue and just, I don't know. I don't know. There's some good things to it. Like I said, I miss it for my job. Um, I do like to watch people laugh and I love to look at animal videos and 
see positivity things, but there are some good and bad to everything. And, and it does, I, I could live without it though. I think I could. All right, now today, your last question for today, and you should be all done today. And you can have your item back tomorrow. Aren't you excited? You get it back today, like tonight though. It says, hooray, you get your item back today. Are you thankful? Do you feel thankful to live in America where you can have extra nice things? So I want to actually hear from you um, about that. Um, uh, that will be, after this is all over, there'll be a question in Google Classroom about that. So there'll be a question about the Navajo people today. Um, and that will be about the Navajo code talkers. So you're going to have to research that. There'll be a question in Google Classroom about that. And there will be a question about your, your experience with giving up your item for a week and how that made you feel. So there'll be two questions in Google Classroom today that I will need you to answer. And then I'm gonna take a picture of this today. So in case you, the Seminole Dictionary, in case you haven't paused the video and wrote those down, that way you can just copy it and list that. Um, hopefully, like I said, I will get to read my book. I want to read it right now. I want to try, but I won't. Okay, so anyway, um, uh, we'll read our goat in the rug that has to do with the Navajo weaver. I'll read that next week. And I am decorating for Christmas in our classroom. Shh. I've got us a Harry Potter tree with Harry Potter ornaments. I've decorated Ollivander's wand shop. So... When you come back to school, there will be some Christmas things up. Anyway, put all your stuff in your purple pocket. Monday and Tuesday, we are going to be doing some activities that require you to... Um, it, we won't be doing a word of the day either one of those days. We're going to be taking some tests. You'll have to have some paper and some pencils. Um, we won't be having to... Try to oh, there we go. I'm um, sorry. I was looking for something. We won't be having to... Um, do any word of the day and we won't be reading a story so we'll have a little more time to do some other things so this paper right here i want you to look at this paper okay this is going to go with our last tribe we're going to talk about next week which is the Seminole. and we're going to actually do this this right here we're going to make hominy i've never eaten hominy i've never made hominy so we're going to do it together if you want to do it at your home with me so what you're going to need so you need this for monday you need water baking soda, and popcorn. And it doesn't mean pop popcorn. It means popcorn that you buy in the bag, just the kernels, okay? Like the old school popcorn that I used to grow up on when you'd pop it on the stove, okay? So you need those three things. And then Monday, we're gonna, I'm gonna video myself. And then Tuesday, we're gonna video ourselves trying it and eating it. And we'll see how that goes. So on Monday, we're, you're gonna need your water, baking soda, and popcorn. You need those three things. And we're gonna do that together okay so anyway i think that will be kind of fun uh, like i said i've never eaten it i've never made it it'll be interesting to eat some hominy i'm sure there's lots of people that have eaten it but i haven't and i sure haven't ever made any um so i'm excited to see you after thanksgiving break so you'll have school on monday and tuesday so make sure you come and watch the videos do your work and then you'll be all done wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday out of school break Okay, so you'll have all that time. If you didn't get something done, you can finish that. Just continue to put everything back in your pocket. Okay, make sure you're doing this. Get everything done. Put it all in there. Make sure when we come back to school that Monday. Yes, we will be back in school on Monday, not a Tuesday. You need to bring both your notebooks back to school. Those are very important. We use those every day. And then you need to bring your purple pocket with all your things in it. And I can give you some grades on those things um, when you get back. I love you. And I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. I hope you enjoy having your item back. <laughs> and um, I will see you on Monday in my video, but I will see you in person in about a week. And remember, kindness is a language everyone can hear. Bye.